What's up team, Angela Gargano here, and today we're gonna to talk about everything to do with your core, and if you're feeling your core exercises in your legs and your low back, instead of actually feeling it where you're supposed to feel it. I don't want you to sit here and be like right now, oh, there's something wrong with me, why am I not feeling it in all the wrong areas? This is because a very common thing happens. We have really, really, really tight hip flexors, and then your hip flexors will take over your core workout. In today's video, we're gonna go over two super important things. One of them is having a proper warm up to really open up those hips so that your hip flexors are loosened up and feeling ready so that when you do do the core workout, you're feeling it in the right areas. We're also gonna go over ways in order to activate those glutes and hip flexors so that again, you continue to feel it all in the right areas. At the end of this video, I also have a seven day free core program that you can download completely free. I'll show you exactly where that is at the end of this. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. A lot of people get what I like to call lazy ass. <laughs> so what happens is you're sitting down every single day on your computer typing, doing those things. And again, your hip flexors get super, super tight. So all this stuff is not only going to be good for you to do before you do any kind of core workout, it's also going to be good to just do in general so that you can loosen that up so that your butt starts to actually engage. Because again, when our hip flexors get really, really tight, it takes over everything. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the warm up. So again, really making sure that we can open up those hip flexors. Okay. So one of the first moves I like to do is do something called the prisoner. So your hand goes behind your neck. You're going to lift your leg up and you're going to circle it all the way around. So the biggest issue I see when people do this is that they just kind of do this <laughs> with their legs. I want to make sure that you're circling all the way around that standing leg and maybe you're feeling some hit, like pops and cracks that is completely normal. So start with these circling all the way around and you do this for about 30 seconds to really open up those hips. <sighs> circling up and circling around. My next favorite one is what I like to call walk out reaches. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk all the way out. You're gonna take your left leg outside your left hand, reach it all the way up, and notice my back leg here is really pushing completely straight. If you need to, you can always drop the back knee down to the ground. You'll reach that hand all the way up, bring the elbow in, place the hand down, switch to the other side, reach it up. And maybe you're noticing that one side is a little tighter than the other, that is completely normal. Again, I would do this for about 30 seconds. Then you're gonna take that left leg outside that left hand and the other side outside the right hand, you're gonna get down nice and low and rock side to side. Now for this one, a lot of people might be like, whoa, my, tip, my hips are so, so tight. And you might be up here, that's okay. Completely normal. So rock side to side. Keep your chest up nice and tall. Then we're gonna take a seat onto our butt. And this is one of my favorite ones to really open up the hips. I call this the gymnastic stretch because we used to do this in my gymnastics practices all the time. So you'd actually come down onto your elbows, lift your leg up, down, and then circle all the way around. Again, if you're feeling some pops and cracks in your hips, that is completely normal as long as you're not feeling any kind of pain. And just a reminder, this is going to switch sides, open up those hip flexors, make them less tight, so that when you go do your core movements, you're not feeling the core movements in your low back, and you're not feeling them just in your legs. And it may take a couple times of doing these stretches in order for that to happen, but you have to stay consistent. So up and down and around. Next up, we're gonna go into something called 90-90. So you're gonna have your front leg at 90 degrees, back leg at 90 degrees. Use your fingertips on the floor for a little, a little extra guidance. You're gonna rotate the toes to the ceiling and then rotate to the opposite side. You're gonna feel a nice stretch here on that hip. Now, if this looks like this, which I see a lot, again, that's okay. It's gonna take a little while, some time, some consistency in order for you to really feel that difference, but we all have to start somewhere, so remember that. And my last but not least favorite one to do is you're gonna go onto your hands and your knees, tuck your toes under, make your feet nice and wide, and we're gonna rock our butt back down to the heels. 
After doing a few with both of your knees down, you can take one leg and bring it out to the side, bring the toe to the ceiling, and then rock it forward. And then you can also do the same thing on the opposite side. So coming in and switching to the other side. Again, I recommend about 30 seconds for each of these moves. I'm going through them a little bit shorter so that you can see everything. All right, so now that we've done this warm up, right? Now that we feel really good and our, our hips are feeling nice and open, another great thing to do is to activate, activate those glutes a little bit so that again, that's why your legs aren't taking over your core workout. And I know it sounds so crazy. You're thinking, why are we doing all of this stuff just so that we can get into our core, right? Because you wanna feel it in the right areas. And this stuff is gonna be really important. This prep is gonna be so important. How annoying is it sometimes if you're doing a workout and then you're realizing that you're actually not targeting what you wanna target until like halfway through that workout? That's annoying, right? So just take the time and do the prep for this. So I've got three different moves here that we're gonna do with a mini band. So grab your mini band, okay? You're gonna put it. Now it can go above or below the knee. I know there's always so many questions on that. The closer it is to your thighs, the easier it's gonna be. And as you move it down, it's gonna get a little bit harder. I like to just keep mine below the knee to start. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some lateral walks. So your toes are going to be parallel. You're gonna have nice tension in the band here. Push the knees out, chest up tall. And you're gonna take one big step and a little step. Now, why is it that I say this? Big step, little step. Because what happens is people do this. Okay, then you're not really feeling it in your hip flexors like you're supposed to, right? So come on down, big step, little step. Keep tension in this band the entire time. Keep your toes parallel. All right, next one we're gonna hop down to the floor. We're gonna do something called the hydrant. So hydrant, and it's literally like, and it's funny that it's called this, but it's so true. It's like you're a dog peeing on a hydrant, so you really wanna think of it that way. You're gonna push evenly into your hands, tuck the toes under, take this belly, push it up to the, to the ceiling, to the air right here. Okay, that's gonna make sure that your core is nice and tight. Push evenly into your hands, and you're gonna lift your leg up and bring it back down. Biggest thing to think about when you're doing these is not leaning to the side, okay? You don't wanna lean out here. Pretend like there's someone standing next to you. There was a wall standing next to you, or, um, a person sitting next to you, you don't want to bump into them. And again, you can do 30 seconds of each of these moves. We're going to go to the other side. 30 seconds on the other side here. And my last favorite move to get ourselves going, we're going to do some marches. So you put the band onto your feet, okay, on your feet, stand it on up. Hands on the hips, chest up tall, you'll lift up, bring that knee into your belly. Whew. Great way again to activate that core. Now your hip flexor should be feeling a little looser. Awesome, you can take the band off and just take a second after you've done these movements and just kind of like, I know it's gonna seem kind of funny, but like wiggle it around. <laughs> Wiggle around, kind of shake your legs out, and notice that you're feeling a lot looser in this area, right? So that, again, you know that when you go to do some of these core movements, you're not gonna feel them right here. So I'm gonna drop down on the floor, and I wanna show you one of the movements that people always, always feel in their legs. And I want you to determine if what you just did today helped a bit in making sure that you're feeling it in the right areas. So hop down. We're gonna do the V in, the classic V in. V in, V up whatever people call it. <laughs> Hands behind your back. You're gonna have your knees into your belly. You're gonna extend your legs all the way out and bring your chest back and then bring it back in. Try a few of these right now. You might notice, okay, that this movement that you might've done before, you might've felt that right here the entire time. Maybe you still feel it there a little bit, but with doing all the stuff that you just, just did now, you should also be like, wow, I actually am feeling it way more in the right areas because I did that. So that's why prep is so important, okay? So everyone wants again, do all these fancy workouts, do all this fancy stuff, but it's this boring stuff. It's this little, these little things that are gonna help you see better results and feel it in the right areas. If you are feeling your core workouts in your legs, in your low back, do this. 
Do this every time before you're actually doing some of your core movements. Do it before you're doing a leg day. Just do it every day in general, like why not, okay? You're gonna see so much better results by doing that. Now, if you're like, oh my goodness, this is so helpful, finally understanding all this, I have a seven day free core program and you can actually there's a link down below that you can click in order to grab it. It's seven full days of workouts where I walk you through everything so that you finally feel everything in your core in all the right places. So go ahead and download that for free. Don't forget to click like and subscribe on this video and I will see you all next time. Bye.